Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm making this video for those of you who weren't able to attend one of the orientation sessions yesterday or today. I'm sorry we missed you. I understand we can't get the schedule to work for absolutely everybody. Um, so I'm just going to cover the material uh, about sort of the structure of the course and some of the basics for you here. Although I will say that our orientation meetings um, were a little bit longer because I got to start out those meetings with a little discussion. Um, and for both uh, groups, I played a video at the beginning. I played different videos for each one. And we just actually talked about what, um, what our classmates heard, what everyone heard in, and, and experienced in those music videos. Uh, one was by Cash Page, a Dallas-based um, uh, singer-songwriter um, producer hip hop and R&B producer, um, young and up and coming producer from Texas. And then the other was uh, Neoma, who's, uh, that's a band from Ecuador, but also they have roots in New Jersey and now they're in Denver, Colorado. So they're, they're both really interesting groups. They're both really just kind of making their way onto the scene now. Um, and we just talked about what we thought of them and we talked about maybe what we thought their influences might be. And I asked some specific questions. Those discussions are now moving to online discussions actually in the week zero segment of the Canvas website. So you can go back and I will, I'm posting the, the videos and the links to the songs there. So you can go back and actually participate in those conversations asynchronously. Um, but I just wanted to let you know we had some real time conversation about those things. Um, so this course is uh, about, it's a survey of popular music. Um, it extends from uh, the dawn of mass media, which, which goes all the way back to the 19th century, if we count uh, printed music and the ways that bourgeois and middle class, increasingly literate, increasingly middle class consumers um, purchased and consumed popular music through the sheet music um, industry in the 19th century. And we go from there all the way through the, um, the popularization of of jazz in the dawn of the recording history in the 1920s, jazz and blues, and uh, the ways that African-American creative forms, working class African-American creative forms, became international phenomena in the 1920s. And how other musical communities, other cultures responded to that, uh, ranging from Afro-Caribbean and Latin American cultures to um, white listeners, and how different audiences responded to those musics. Uh, we'll talk about post-war music, um, the dawn of rock and roll um, with baby boomers kind of inventing new ways of appreciating and listening to music um, with different media and different practices for how we love and experience music. We'll talk about the cultural revolution and the music of, um, I'm sorry, we'll talk about a cultural, a sense of cultural revolution, um, not the cultural revolution in China, of course, but a, a sense of cultural revolution in the late 60s and in the 1970s in the United States. Um, where we get everything from British invasion bands to um, uh, psychedelic music to the music of the civil rights era that's um, related to uh, funk and uh, kind of the, the foundation genres that will eventually develop what we now know as hip hop, um, soul music, everything from James Brown and Sly and the Family Stone to Bob Dylan and um, the Kinks. So lots of different music there in the sort of um, 60s and 70s and uh, early 80s and then finally um, we'll talk about uh, the mid 80s to the present day as an era in which um, music really takes a turn that's driven by consumer producers, driven by people who actually take an active role in the music that they make. Um, starting with the hip hop kind of uh, the dawn of hip hop in the Bronx in the late 70s but really getting popularized in the late 80s which is a music which at that time is really about appropriating and taking musical ideas that are already recorded, that are already consumer ideas uh, from the past or the present and remaking them, reestablishing them as a different kind of expression, using them for purposes that maybe were really different uh, from the ones they were originally designed to fulfill. So if you've ever seen a DJ work in connection with a hip hop artist um, and uh, sort of use a beat or a groove from another uh, musician um, from something made in a different place in a different community by someone who they might not even know, then you know that popular music can really be about taking um, music across cultural and community boundaries. And in fact, that's what we're going to discuss throughout this quarter as one of the main definitions of popular music. It's the way that music 
um, that might be originally designed for or um, developed within a, a community of listeners that really knows themselves. Uh, music that starts out as something authentically ours in our neighborhood, in who we are, or um, and in our own sense of uh, self, ethnicity, occupation, um, community, uh, somehow crosses over boundaries and starts to exist outside that community. We start to talk about music as being popular music when the music of one culture that seems to belong in one culture and seems to be really legible and understandable in one culture um, becomes important, sometimes for very different reasons, um, for very different cultures and very different communities. Um, and the important thing there is we get different people from different perspectives, sometimes listening to the same song, but bringing very different values and very different priorities to the way that music fits in their lives. Um, and it's that tension that's really gonna be one of the major themes of our, of our course as we explore music all the way through, the, the, mostly in the 20th century, um, but including some music in the 19th century as well. Um, so uh, I'm gonna share my screen here and um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna share the screen to show you the actual course. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, this should probably do it. Um, so here is a view of the Canvas website that you should be able to see in your own um, Canvas portal. And you'll see that the course is divided um, into units. You've got week zero here, which is where we are now. We're doing orientation and there's a lot of important information about the course and how to navigate an online course in, in this segment that you'll see here. Um, and then we've also got units one, two, three, four, and five. Just a minute ago, I, I quickly sort of went through all five of those categories when I described the scope of our survey of popular music. But you'll see that that's divided into five units re representing those sort of different topics. And each unit is two weeks long. So right now in Canvas, you can only see one unit. And, um, but as soon as you finish unit one, unit two will pop up and you'll be able to see that as well, as long as you finish the materials. Um, within any given unit, we've got um, a range of things that we need you to do in that two week time period. So let me just kind of tell you um, how it's gonna go. I'll tell you sort of what the, what the general scope of things are. Typically, there are three lectures per unit. And the way you want to think about this is it's kind of like a course where if there were two lectures a week and you met with your instructor in a classroom for about an hour and a half, hour and 35 minutes um, in each of two different meetings, um, you might expect about an hour of that meeting to be really dense lecture content. And other portions of the meeting might be explaining, uh, explaining assignments or discussion or something a little bit more interactive. It varies from course to course. But what you're seeing here is just that hour. So if you click on lecture one, you'll see an hour's worth of pre-recorded videos that are my uh, lectures that, I, that I've pre-recorded. And they're broken up into little segments. Um, and they're edited videos. They're videos that I took some time to prepare and we filmed them with a few cameras. And they're edited pretty carefully. So the material's a little more dense than you might expect in a typical lecture. Uh, which is why, um, you know, uh, we've only got about an hour's worth of material associated um, with each uh, of the lectures, again, broken up into these segments. And typically, what you're going to find is that there are two of those lectures associated with week one, and then a third one associated with week two in any two-week unit. Um, and I've given you some rough deadlines, which are kind of guidelines for when I'd like you to have those lectures finished by. I'm not going to keep track of that. I'm not going to take attendance, but those are your guidelines for when you should have them finished by. Um, and then in the second week, there's, as you can see, there's only one lecture because the main activity in that second week, you're going to turn in a, 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 a what we're going to call a listening response. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, a listening response on Tuesday. And then between Tuesday of that second week in each unit, all the way to the um, beginning of the next week. So about six days, we want you to be online and actively discussing the music with your peers and your classmates. So that's really your opportunity to demonstrate active listening and to demonstrate that process where you start to make music mean something based on your own experiences. And this course is really about you um, 
having listening practices that are like the practices of audiences that have made music popular over the years. So, um, uh, so I'll talk a little bit about those listening responses in a minute, but you'll want to be uh, paying attention to these lectures with the idea that in my lectures, I'm modeling the kinds of responses and the kinds of thinking and the kinds of listening that I'd like you to do in those listening responses. So um, we also have readings. And again, I've broken them down into deadlines when I'd like you to have each reading done by um, according to the two week period. Um, uh, and then uh, finally, listening lists. And each listening list, again, a kind of a suggested deadline for when you should uh, listen to music. Um, and you'll see that uh, within a particular listening list, and I'm clicking on it right now, we give you a little bit of a description of what you're listening to. And then uh, I've listed a few tracks as being required. Uh, sometimes they're not all bunched together. Um, the other ones are more elective. So you can see here that the first, second, and third, as well as the ninth track are required tracks. And we wanna make sure you listen to those by the date that's listed here. Um, uh, and then if you've done all that work uh, in the first week or week and a half or so, you'll be ready to do a listening response. And listening responses, there's always gonna be more than one option because we wanna kind of develop some smaller conversations um, with the smaller groups of students. Um, the number of options is gonna increase as we go through the course. It's gonna get more and more diverse uh, because there's more and more types of music to listen to as we move through history. Um, but you only choose one of them. You just choose a single uh, listening response option. And you'll see there are some general practical instructions at the top. And then you've got an assignment. And we ask you to think about how you might listen to a song. We ask you to think about some ideas from the readings. And then we ask you to compare two songs with the, uh, sorry, with the listening guidelines from lecture and the ideas from the readings are gonna both kind of come into, the pl into play as you talk about what you hear. Um, it's about three to 500 words. It's a pretty short response that you write about your own listening and you post it here and your classmates get to hear it. Uh, sorry, get to read it. So you'll actually be in a, that's this Tuesday listening response that you submit in the second week of each unit is just the beginning of a conversation. It's not an essay that we're grading. We're not assessing your accuracy here. This is you beginning the process of, of describing and conversing about what you hear in the music of this unit. And the grade is for your participation and your cultivation of a larger conversation. So typically um, there's eight points. Uh, the first, the first um, submission that you make, that listening response is worth eight points. And then there's another four points that's associated with you getting involved in, in the discussion, asking questions of your peers and your classmates and some teaching assistants and um, uh, peer mentors um, that I'm mentoring um, as a part of this course experience will come in and they'll help you, they'll help guide your conversation. They'll help navigate it and um, cultivate the ways that you describe music to one another. They'll ask you further questions. They'll ask you to go deeper. And hopefully this is gonna be a great sort of uh, experience for you to cultivate yourself as an active listener. And um, hopefully it'll make us into a kind of a miniature popular music community. So in a way, we'll see this course. We've got about 450 students. And this course will actually be a kind of a mini popular culture. And some of the things, the dynamics that we'll notice in our conversation will be ways for us. They'll be, that'll kind of be a way that we can understand larger trends and larger processes and dynamics in popular culture. Kind of, we can see them unfolding right before our very eyes right here in this little community. All right. So aside from that, um, in any given unit, there are going to be two quizzes. Like I said, there are two weeks two week units. So as you move through the units and you get through the first week, you're going to see that there is a quiz associated with unit one in the middle of the unit. And there's a quiz associated with unit one at the end of the unit. And each of those quizzes um, you'll want to take um, with as much preparation as you can muster. You want to sort of uh, make sure that you understand your notes and have taken some notes on the readings. Um, and have taken the time to review your lecture notes uh, before each quiz. The week one quiz in any unit 
um, will be pretty easy, just five questions, and it's pretty low stakes, just a couple, just kind of 2% of your grade. And that's more of kind of a check-in so that I can, I can check your responses and I can think a little bit about uh, how well you're understanding the material and that'll help me uh, develop my communication with you as we go forward. And it's your chance to kind of send, get a sense for how well you're taking notes and how well you're understanding the material. Um, and then the week two quiz, the one at the end of the unit is a little bit more high stakes. It's one you wanna, it's actually cumulative, so it'll cover the whole unit. And you wanna take a little more time to prepare a little more carefully for that quiz. Um, uh, by the way, um, all of the lectures have outlines. So I'll just, um, if I click on this, I think I should be able to, um, actually I'm gonna stop the share so that I can share with you again. Um, there we go. So this is an example of one of my lecture outlines which you can download from the second lecture. You can see that they're pretty detailed um, in the first uh, unit here, these first three lectures. Um, we've got a lot of detail here. Um, not all of my lecture outlines are gonna have this much detail. Some of, them are gonna be, some of them are gonna be much rougher, much more general. Um, I've made them detailed here in the first couple of weeks so that you'll get an idea of the kinds of notes that I think you should consider trying to take while I'm giving a lecture. So this has not only the headings and the outlines, but it has a lot of the things that I'm actually saying about the terms and about the concepts in the course. And um, so the lecture outlines also have time codes associated with them. So you'll be able to go in, if you wanna go back to that point in the lecture, you should be able to go to the time code in the lecture. And if you wanna to try to remember what I said about say commodification, you would go back to time code 207 in that, in that lecture segment um, to remind yourself of what I said and kind of hear that portion of the lecture again. Um, and uh, hopefully that's going to be a good way for you to orient yourself to the material. But again, in the other, uh, in the other uh, lecture outlines, they won't be quite as detailed. They'll be a little bit more. I think of the lecture outlines as something you can download before you hear the lecture uh, and then either have them printed out or kind of use them as an, like a, a, like a, a guide a set of guideposts that'll help you kind of know where I am in the discussion. And I strongly encourage that you take notes using pencil and paper or pen and paper, um, which is actually studies show people who are experts in learning styles have noted that people tend to retain things better and tend to be more active learners when they take notes with pencil and paper. And that's really what this course is about. It's really about trying to bring about a more active approach to listening to music than you might be used to. And um, it's gonna be a long uh, and interesting journey. I'm really excited about it. Um, one last thing, at the beginning when I'm offering you these uh, listening guidelines, um, you'll see that some of the concepts are difficult. Uh, at the beginning, you might find yourself wondering, gosh, I, I'm not sure I really understand what Ben means by syncopation or melisma, uh, and it's hard for me to hear. Don't worry too much about that. Um, don't worry too much if you don't get musical form right away. This course is not really about you having the right answer when you uh, right away as a listener. It's not about you being able to listen and, and being like, oh, I heard the trumpet or oh, I heard the, the rhythm go exactly the way Ben said it would go. Um, it's really about developing a practice of listening. You're being graded for your comprehension of the ideas and for your ability to um, represent that knowledge in these quizzes and in your written discussions. There will be a few quiz and exam questions that are about listening, but they're very basic and I'm gonna ease my, I'm gonna ease our way into it slowly and you're gonna get lots of chances to practice before you're gonna be held to any particular standard of really hearing musical form or melody. Um, so it's a course that's totally fine for people who are not uh, music majors, not musicians who don't have experience um, performing or reading music. But by the end of this course, I hope you're gonna think of yourself as somebody whose active music listening is a kind of musicianship. I hope you'll start to think of yourself as a listener who's got a role, who has some sense of agency in the way music works in your life. All right, um, I'm gonna post this video and if you've got any questions, please ask them in the reply section beneath the post that I make. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation with you. Talk to you soon.